Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'm going to review the Longer LK4X 3D printer. It's a new offering from Longer that introduced automatic leveling, direct drive extrusion, and a magnetic spring steel bed. So how did it perform, and what do I think of it? Well, let's find out. Before I even get into the specs uh, and features of this machine, I wanted to quickly talk about the Longer brand. If you've been following my channel for a little bit, you may have seen my review of this machine, the Longer LK5 Pro. The reason I wanted to talk about this is because many times when we do reviews of machines or brands on YouTube, we're only able to test the machine for a few weeks or so, but obviously can't speak to the longevity of the machines. I have been using this longer machine almost nonstop for a year and have printed well over a thousand objects on this machine. I've printed so many things on it that I've worn out the filament sensor twice. Other than that, I've only swapped out the nozzle and that's about it. So, you know, this machine and company have been a workhorse for me. So I just kind of wanted to mention that real quick. So back to this machine. This again is the LK4X. So a little bit smaller than the LK5 Pro, but packed with more features. First, the assembly of this machine was super easy. You just have to bolt on the frame with four bolts, attach the filament sensor and filament holder, as well as the touchscreen and the BL touch. Then you just have to attach some wires and you are done. I think I had the whole thing together in about 10 minutes. The machine has a workable area of 220 by 220 on the X and Y by 250 millimeters on the Z. The heated bed of the printer is magnetic and has a textured surface, flexible spring steel top that allows for easy removal of the parts. The printer does come with a metal spatula, but honestly, I haven't needed to even remove the sheet to flex as the parts come off easily as the bed cools down. Now, one other thing I wanted to say about the surface on this is it, it is a, a rougher surface than something like the LK5 Pro. Now, this just means that the bottom of your models are going to have a little bit of a textured surface on it instead of uh, super flat. Now, if you wanted a flatter surface, you would just have to print a raft of some sort uh, and then you can, you can get kind of a flatter surface, but it's never going to be the same as you know, the glass on some of the other machines. The extruder on the printer is a direct drive dual gear extruder so that the machine should be able to work with many different types of filaments, including flexible filaments. This is in contrast to the older machine from Longer, which I believe were all Bowden setups that have the extruder on the frame. The print head also has dual fans that help cool down the plastic as it prints. The LK4X also comes with automatic bed leveling. The machine will test 16 points on the bed to find the exact height and will compensate for any deviations in the actual levelness of the bed. It is highly recommended that you level the bed manually first to get the machine as close as possible to being level before you run this procedure. To do this, you use the 4.3 inch color touchscreen and click on leveling which then gives you the option to manual or automatic leveling. If you click on manual, you can then choose the five points on the bed to move to as you adjust the spring knobs on the bottom uh, to check the height with a piece of paper. I highly recommend that you heat the bed first before running this as the heat can somewhat expand the bed, so it's always better to run it heated. You can change the heated bed temp under the tune button. After you manually level the bed to the best of your ability, I would then run the auto leveling procedure. This fine tunes the leveling and gets you a very consistent results across your build surface. As you are printing your first part, you only need to potentially fine tune your Z height adjustment to fine tweak your first layer, which I will discuss in a moment. The machine is very quiet and has a 32-bit motherboard that uses four TMC2208 stepper drivers that make for a super quiet printing experience. The loudest part of this machine are the fans, which are still relatively quiet. One thing that I like is that the motherboard 
on this newer version of the machine is the location of it. On the older models, it placed the boards and SD card ports near the rear of the machine, which made it a little bit harder to access, but now the micro SD card and USB-A ports for the direct connection to my computer to the machine are right up front for easy access. Other features include easy manual belt tensioning knobs for both the X and Y axis. I, uh, it also has a filament runout sensor right at the spool that angles and moves with the direction of the extruder for a nice and smooth operation. The machine is also equipped with a resume printing function that will allow you to pick up the and print where it left off in case of a loss of power. The only thing I would say about that is that it would be helpful if the loss of power was short because again the part may release itself from the build plate as it cools down. Okay, so that's it for the specs, so now let's go over how it performed. The first thing I printed on this machine was the Benchy that came on the SD card. It came out pretty nice except for the bottom which seemed a little off, but I chalked that up to a fresh machine and first print. But Later realized I had an issue when I printed my calibration cube. I figured out that I had two issues. The first was that the lead screw was not pulling the side without the lead screw up evenly, uh, so, and then it would eventually catch up. The reason for this is that the concentric nuts on the Z-axis plates were too tight and slightly misaligned. I simply loosened the concentric nuts slightly, and I also unscrewed and then re-screwed the x-axis plate and then everything moved fine after that point. The second thing I needed to adjust was the z height offset. After printing another calibration cube I could see that I was just shy of the proper height so I entered the difference into the z height offset, printed again, and got a perfect cube. If I had one thing that I wish I saw on this machine it would have been dual z lead screws. That would have eliminated at least some of the issues that I just talked about. But again, the LK5 Pro with its larger work area only has a single lead screw and it has served me well for quite a while now, so I can't really complain. With the machine now well calibrated, I wanted to run a few more models. The machine comes with an SD card and USB reader for it with some directions, models, and some Cura profiles for easy setup of the machine. It's great to have those profiles, but I might recommend adjusting the start G code in the machine settings of the file. The issue is, is that the way it's set up, it'll run that auto leveling procedure before every time it prints. I think this is a bit of overkill, and it's not something you should have to run each time you print. The levelness of the bed should not shift all that often, so I would only recommend doing that procedure periodically. Uh, I will copy my starting G-code text in the video description for anyone who would like to check it out. So I sliced and printed this very nice Mandalorian figure and the results came out very nice. It was printed without supports and the machine did a wonderful job at 0.2 micron resolution. Just a little side note here, I captured this time lapse with a Beagle camera no relation, which allowed me to control the machine as well as send files to it wirelessly. It works great with this machine and plugs right into that front USB-A port. Basically an easy to use uh, device that's similar to an Octoprint, which you may have heard of, but without the Raspberry Pi. Let me know in the comments if you would like a review of that device. So back to the LK4X. You can't have a Mandalorian without a Go Groove, so I printed one up of him as well. I printed him at a higher 0.1 micron resolution with supports, and again the machine worked flawlessly. So these were not super long prints, so I thought I would go bigger and longer. So why not shoot for the moon? So I printed the moon. This was around a 35 hour print, which is one of my longest prints ever. The longest being the Eiffel Tower print on my LK5 Pro at over 40 hours. The moon came out great, and now my kids have a new nightlight for their room. I'm keeping the Mandalorian. So I know I can print, but I wanted to test out the accuracy of the levelness of this machine. I decided to print this torture test chainmail to really make sure the bed and auto leveling were working properly. This is a long print and has many places to fail, but it did a great job. Not only did it finish, but it pulled right off the bed without any issues whatsoever. I was really impressed with the ability of this machine and the longer brand.
So I've spouted all the praise on this machine, but there are just a few things that I, that I think might be improved on. I already mentioned how I wish the machine had dual Z lead screws. The second thing that I wish was a little bit more substantial is the spool holder for the filament. While it is metal, if you put a new heavy spool up there, it does have a little bit of wobble in it, so I would have liked that to be a little bit more sturdy. The last thing I had a slight issue with was that I had a bit of a clog when unloading my filament from the direct drive extruder. Now, I can't 100% say that it wasn't my filament that was to blame, or the fact that maybe I didn't heat the filament up high enough before unloading it, but whatever the case, it happened. There was just a small bit of plastic preventing me from adding my next spool at the extruder. Uh, it's just a bit more of a process to remove the cover, detach the extruder, and open to clear the clog. At least it gave me an excuse to see how the inner workings of the machine operates, uh, as I always like to know how everything is constructed. Again, I'm not blaming the extruder or the machine for this issue, as it was older filament and happened to me only once in between the few times that I changed the spools uh, with this machine, but it happened, so I'm mentioning it. Overall, I've been very happy with the quality and results of this machine, and it will definitely go into my arsenal of 3D printers and hopefully be the workhorse that its big brother, the LK5 Pro, is. I wanted to thank Longa for sending me this machine for a review and allowing me to give my honest opinion on it. I look forward to seeing what this company comes out with in the future. So that's it. Thanks again for watching. If you liked this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more videos having to do with 3D printers, laser engravers, injection molding, CNC, and all things maker. As always, stay safe and we'll see you next time.